booming across Nigeria is the wind of hope as Africa's young entrepreneurs with the same dream take a break from their everyday lives and embark on a journey across the nation with their ideas, innovations, and inventions. From the east, west, north, and south of Nigeria, we will witness as they make their way through the screening and auditioning to meet and convince the AYE judges why they should be among the chosen beneficiaries. You can't come and speak to a panel of investors and say there's a whole lot of choices. You need to be as strong as you are technically with what you want. No, 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 I'm coming. This is new idea and new business. But it, you don't really have a very strong structure of how you see your vision practically moving forward. You know, you know it feels very loose to me. I think you should have sat with them before you come here. If you invest in that business today, you're not coming in to, to make mistakes. We will experience their passion. So I want to feed African as a nation. Their pain. Get out of here. And their gain. Hey, why you give you a lot of customers. You cater for them, I will give you money up front. You'll be able to buy all your equipment. Over the last three seasons, hundreds of entrepreneurs have entered to face the judges. Some nervous, some confident, all in anticipation of the judges' verdict. This is the AYE Reality TV Show. I hope that they will love my idea. I hope that they will love my style. I hope that they will love my creativity and I hope that they will give me the opportunity to be able to do more and expand my business. Meet Abigail, an architect turned fashion designer who employs her creative skills into the creation of garments. Can she creatively pitch her business despite the competition in the fashion industry? Let's hear why she is here. My name is Abigail Ataudi and I am a fashion designer I love the art of creating garments from the very first idea to my 2D patterns and the 3D patterns and the eventual final finish of the dress. My business caters to women who love the idea of bespoke dresses for their celebratory moments from where their career takes them to their personal life with friends and family. According to the African Development Bank, clothing and textiles represent about 7% of the world's exports, and apparel manufacturing is shifting with the frontier of production moving to Africa. It is becoming a top garment sourcing destination and an emerging competitor for clothing brands. I started this business in 2013 from a three by four meter bedroom somewhere in the outskirts of Abuja. And today, by God's grace, I'm able to work from my studio with close proximity to my raw materials and visibility to customers who can easily walk in without me having to travel about an hour or more, coming down to get fabrics in the market to meet clients and then going back to where I work. But I, I have I've realized that I, I, I know that I can make such garments in two to three days, but I don't have the machineries and the tools to be able to do that. I have had to tell my customers that the addresses will be ready in 14 days only because I want to have enough time to offset that power failure or any malfunction that happens with my machineries and everything. I hope that AYA can give me the opportunity to be able to get more machines and a generator to help me have constant electricity when I need to work and produce these garments. So based on your pricing point, I, I don't know what your prices look like. I would want to understand who would, you, who would be your clientele? Um, I cater to women who, within the ages of um, 20 to 40, usually working class, but they, my dresses are based on the design. 
So I get to talk with my clients. They tell me what their budget is. I recommend fabric suggestions. I make fabric suggestions to them and tell them how best and what I can get with what they have. Hmm. And if it's not able, to, if they're not able to afford maybe the ID, because they usually come with like pictures, um, images that this is what they want. And I let them know you can do this and get this with this kind of fabric. You can do their fabrics that range from 250. Their fabrics I can get for 20,000. Their fabrics I can get for 1,000 Naira per yard. It just, it's very flexible. Knowing her target market, Abigail educates the judges on her business and the progress made so far. And what would be a, an average sort of budget a woman would, would come to you with? Um, usually for, uh, depending on the event, if I'm saying a premium event, maybe a wedding, they usually come with about 70 to 150 thereabout. Let's take this dress, for example. What, what would you sell that for? This would cost about 150. 1,000 Naira? Yes. Okay. Abigail, what is your background? Um, I have a design base in architecture from Covenant University, and that had helped me with my design pro process. Literally, I still use the T-square I used in school to, do my, to cut my patterns. So my experience with TD and and construction and all the drawings has helped me to make my garments a lot more precise. So an architect yeah. turned fashion designer. Yes. That's interesting, really interesting. Thank you. What's your current turnover? Like what, what's your profit say monthly or no, let's say six months to a year because I'm sure it's very different every month. Well, um, it's not just like you said, it's very different every month. It just depends on how what I get. But as a last year, I was able to get 300 and 391. Was that income year. or profit? No, income. Income. Not so pro what? my profit was about 30%, 31%. Okay, so about a 120k yes. profit. Yes. If you get what you're asking for, and we haven't ascertained yet what that is, um, how will that change? I believe that I will be able to, I will have um, the time to, because I had to turn, I, I'll have to turn down a lot of customers. If I can't do it within my 14 days, I'll let you know, I'm sorry, I can't take this job. Because of that, I've been able, I've had to turn down some jobs. I know that I will, I will be able to take in more jobs, at least do um, maybe five, yeah, because three more. into 14, like yes. you said, it'd be three days with machinery. Two to three days to create right. a garment. Well, I had to give them 14 days because of my, um, yes. Is the demand there that ha if the time, if it's about time, yes, that you would then, therefore, if you follow the maths, have about five times the amount of yes. clientele and turnover? Yes, about two, two to three times more. Two to three times yes. more. Okay. And how do you market yourself right now? Well, um, I use um, social media a lot, Instagram, um, Pinterest, um, Twitter. I use all of that to put, if I have to put an ad, I do that. I also um, get to work with other creatives around me, those who, models and photographers who are also trying to grow as well and we uh, benefit from each other. Abigail, what do you want from AYE? What brings you here today? Um, Obviously it, support, but what kind of support? Machineries and tools. My business plan on page 20 has um, a budget for the kind of machineries that I'm looking to get. What's the total? 970,000. Naira? Yes. And this is for the machinery, does it include fabrics? No, just just tools and machinery. Just machinery. Yes. No you, expansion. You're not expanding the space. You're going to work from the same. From the same space. You are. Yes. Okay. Do you charge a deposit? Do you ask people for money? Yes, I ask for 
at least 70% to help me get the materials I need and 30% on delivery. What is your, what is your growth trajectory? I mean, you, you, you get this 970K, hypothetically, right? Yes, or you have someone who gives you the money, invests outside of AYE. How do you, how, where do you see this business going? I believe that I will be able to reach more clients. I believe that soon I will be able to sell my pieces, even at, I will be able to make those pieces and sell them off the rack because I, I can't do that now because I don't have the materials to, to produce them and have them hanging on the rack. I have to wait for someone to come and request and use what they have given me to produce these garments. I believe that I will be able to run that. I, will, I believe that I will be able to open an online store where people can come. I will have various sizes of garments and... Abigail, can you give us a moment? We'd just like to deliberate this and we'll call you back in. All right, thank you. Thank you. The business is the dress, and the dress is beautiful. So, um, I think that um, two things is going to happen to her, I predict. Number one, she's been showcased to lots of women out there who want something like this. And number two, uh, there's a huge possibility that she's going to get a request. Depends on what other people think. I think she's on she's on another level to a lot of um, fashion people we see. I'd love to see her getting support one way or another. And I think the fact that she's managed to come, as she says, out of her bedroom into a space, the fact that she's surrounded by other creatives actually enables her to promote herself more effectively as well. And that that collaborative space it speaks a lot for um, you know moving herself forward. I think also the exposure here is fantastic. I will take her on as my bespoke tailor. Personally, I think she's great. So we all think she's pretty good. And is there any way, I'm not going to be buying a dress, but is there any way that through your network you can get together a whole lot of people who would want to buy dresses? And I'm just thinking in lieu of funding to get in like a whole lot of orders. Help out with the marketing. And, and, and then we can help photograph and create like a portfolio, you know, that she's suddenly done 20 garments. You, you know where I'm going mm. with that? Mm. 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 All right. I guess um, that's... I have, uh, I have two questions for her though. Mm. Then uh, I think that's a very good suggestion as well to save us from direct investment uh, and um, probably bring in people because there are people for such things. But then let's, let's bring that in. Sure. Abigail, how do you feel? Nervous. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Yes, sir. Now, looking at what you do, how do you affect your local community, people around you? Let's forget about just the creatives now. But um, how does this affect others? Um, I have, um, because of what I know, and I know that there are a lot of young people around me who are willing to learn, and they want to pick up these skills, but the costs are really high to go to a fashion school to learn this. I've given the opportunity to about two people, one currently with me now, who is interning at no cost at all, to learn what I'm doing. So she works with me and when people approach me like that, I'm will, always willing to give that opportunity as long as you are ready to put in the work as long as it is what you want to do. Okay, in the next five years. Yes. So black flare, phrase, right? It's gonna be black flare. Yes. 
Yeah, I pray so. How is it going to affect Africa? I believe that I would be able to reach a lot more young, aspiring fashion designers with my work. I believe that I would be able to teach a lot more people how to create garments. I believe I will be an encouragement to someone somewhere who hears my story and knows that I started from a three by four bedroom and now I can do this. Now, the marketplace, Yes. how do you help? Um, I, well, the footage and all that hasn't come out because it was just like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to get publicity. I was able to get some contacts. Even though I wasn't, I didn't have pieces on my rack to sell, people were able to recognize, I recognized my work. People were able to appreciate the work that I had done and put into this particular garment. And I believe that with time, as um, the footage goes out to the media, I will be able to get a lot more calls from people who want to make garments like this. You know what I believe? I believe you're going to get a lot of customers as well from today because um, millions are watching this. I think this is beautiful. But then, but I will deliver our outcome. Abigail, it's a beautiful dress, okay? And I think there's a lot of room for fashion in Nigeria and just Africa in, in totality. I'm going to be your first client, okay? Thank you. So I'm going to make an order or a dress or two, okay. send you the designs, right. pay for the fabric, pay for the labor, okay? And if I like the specifics of the clothing you're going to make, if I like, if the finishings are great, okay, I'm going to invest parts in your business. Thank you. Okay? Yes. And I'm going to help you with my female network to help get you clients. Thank you. But it will start with whether you're able to create something beautiful and as specific as I want it. Right. How's that? That's good. So go home happy. Have Thank a nice you. Day. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. They liked it and they are giving me an opportunity to prove myself. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> Inspired by a dream to solve problems, prefer solutions, and make profits, Isaac ventured into multimedia solutions as well as digital and event management. He is looking to expand his business with a grant of 2 million naira. I'm, I'm happy with your journey and how you got the inspiration. What's your income per month? Okay, when I started, since I started for the past six months, it has been growing, so it has not really been stable, but on an average, I, uh, I have been getting a cash income of 40,000 naira on an average for the past six months. But last month, I made an estimate. At least I moved from 40 to about 60,000. What I've done here is your growth plan, your marketing plan, none of that. You're asking for financing. Is a financing grant or loan? What are you looking for? I'm asking for a grant. Okay. Which even makes it, you know, much more difficult because I don't uh, you've not told us you tell it you told us where you are yes ma'am a little bit of what you want to do tomorrow and the day after but this was a long-term strategy for growth oh, um, my long-term strategy for growth um, which is also I have identified my traction uh, measures is I intend to harness every tool and technique available at my disposal to get more clients to whom I can provide more of these solutions to so that they can pay me. I, I also intend to, while I, as I expand the business, as I set up my workspace and all that, I also intend to have more income by getting more volunteers or more staff that we can work together and produce more of these services so that we can be paid for. So, um, I, have, I, have, I, have a, I have a financial plan, I have a growth plan. Sorry, I'm trying to get myself together. 
with an unstructured business plan and a fuzzy long-term projection, Isaac stutters. He obviously needs to go back to his drawing board, strategize and equip himself with the necessary information required of an entrepreneur to scale up his business. We believe that you've got lots of potential, you've got a warm, beautiful personality, Thank you. and things have just worked out for you. Thank you, sir. But we'd like to take you to the next level by offering you an IIN scholarship to build your business acumen and understand exactly how this business is going to look like in a year from now, two years from now, yes, and ultimately how we want to help you make this business succeed. Yes, sir. So it's a no for all the funding, but we'd like to offer you a space at the AYE Masterclass okay, sir. to learn more about business. I appreciate the offer. I'm grateful. Are you an African entrepreneur? Get funding for your business or idea with Africa's Young Entrepreneurs Empowerment Fund. A-Y-E One event, 10 activities, 100 exhibitors, and 10,000 entrepreneurs. The largest gathering of entrepreneurs in Africa is coming. A-Y-E I have a question for you. What happens when life emergencies happen? What happens to you when you are in need of urgent funds? No, no, no I want my money now. What will happen if you suddenly need a doctor or lawyer's advice in a critical moment? Hey, what we like to now? What we like to? The big question is this. Who will trust you enough to come to your aid? AYE Trust Fund. Join the trusted community today. A brilliant entrepreneur has developed an idea from his dilemma and intends to reach out to a wider audience facing the same challenges. Desiring an investor, he's aimed at promoting Nigerian languages through the app he calls the Mother Tongue. That's just incredibly interesting to me that there's so many languages and I think it's admirable what you want to achieve. Can you go into a little bit of detail about the, the development? So, as you mentioned, there's free apps available online that you can modify. You want to develop from scratch. Yes, the so thing is So what are you this. budgeting for that development? Yes, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, most of these um, free apps online are being uh, de developed by companies overseas. Now, if you're going to partner with such people, right there, you can do that. It's very achievable. But there are certain barriers, like for instance, getting the translators to work here in Nigeria, and now working with people they don't, you know, able to communicate overseas will be problematic and could be very, very expensive. Where's the profit? Show me the money. The profit? Yeah, we invest 363 million. Okay. How do we make money? Okay, one of the revenue streams yeah. is the NYC core. Now the whole concept of the NYC is to promote cultural uh, togetherness. Mm. That's why you see coppers are being sent to the camps and now designated to work within the communities, be it in the north, south, east and west. Now, I want to take back to myself again, another experience that I had. You don't have time for experiences anymore. Narrow down. Okay, narrow down. Okay, I'll try my best. Getting there, I didn't know how to speak the Alusa language. 
You have, you have 30 don't... seconds to tell us where the money is. Unable to effectively pitch his idea and profit-making strategy, Timmy Tayo contradicts himself. Would you, would you give us a minute? We'll call you back now. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. In the darkroom, Temi Tayo appears to rethink his strategy in order to steer the peach to his favor. The, do I understand the product yet fully? Not really. That's the problem. Maybe when I get the product, then I understand it. It's a language teaching yeah, tool, but, but maybe it's how an do you use it? Oh, it's the, an idea. You download yeah, the app, does, it's yeah. free, right? And then there must be a payment system to be able to use it. Yeah. So you either use your card or anything to be able to 1,500 naira, he said, to pick up that language. And my thing is that the corpus and the NYC, right? Is it just these 15 languages that he's put here that they're sent to those areas or everywhere? Maybe we choose the major one. Let's assume he chose the major languages. It's still not profitable. But if he closed the, if he called the Nigerian government a closed government, then he's going back to NYC. That's too. Well, he's entitled. To, <laughs> he's entitled, right? No, no, no. But it's but flawed. You get it. If you cannot approach them for the thing, yeah. you are going to approach them for the sales. Yeah. So how is it going to be easy? You know how. It's easier to sell. He's assuming uh -huh. that these coppers want to learn other languages. That's the assumption. Which you would want to. You're stuck in a. But I think place. the bigger, the bigger language you want to learn. Yeah. This is what I would say, right? I don't see the money, I'll tell you why I don't see it. He's starting with 15 languages, putting in 391 million naira or 393 million naira into the business, okay? The corpus have a specific number, he said 200, are they 200 every year? 200,000. 200,000? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this 200,000 are sent to different regions across the country, I'd like to believe. So most of them are not gonna use this, only the places of these 15 languages. If this guy can show us two other people that can use this product without the coppers, then maybe I'll understand the product. Let's bring him in. I understand you and I wouldn't invest in that. I can see the risks in it. My sense is I can't feel it as a business, but I do feel there's potentially mm -hmm. someone in the world, yeah. a heritage society or something like yeah. that, who would back your your wonderful project mm. of saving languages and at the same time on the side you could create an app or do a YouTube channel if enough people are interested they'll watch you can make money off YouTube but I, I believe it's a heritage body of some sort a cultural preservation body of which they, they exist in the world you need to research find them and get them to support you and you can be their guy. Ask to further develop the business model and probably design a demo to aid understanding the AYE president hands Temi Tayo his complimentary card for the presentation of the demo. My expectation is to win their hearts, to tell them about my business and to touch a special part of their hearts so they can give me the grant I want for my business. Franca is a woman that has thrived in the men's world. Inspired by her father, she is making a name for herself alongside running a business where she trains people on the art of carpentry. She seeks support to tackle the challenges she faces to effectively satisfy her customers. Tell us about your business. Okay, the Spartan Hive is a furniture production company and we also train apprentices in furniture production, interior decoration and waste management, that's wood waste management. Then we also do consultancy services for NGOs and schools who want to set up vocational centers and um, workshops too. The growth in the furniture business can be attributed to Africa's rapidly growing urban population's effect on the real estate market, according to Reuters. However, one of the challenges is the lack of enough professional furniture makers to meet the man, as opposed to wayside carpenters who equally try to make chairs, tables, and beds. This definitely creates an immense opportunity for a myriad of African youths who could embrace the vocation and learn the craft of qualitative modern furniture making. Then, our business, um, our furniture production gives us high um, income monthly and the entrepreneurship training for vocational centers too give us high income of training. At like every month, we get about 800,000 there. That's the general income. 
then when we subtract the wages, um, salaries, and cost of production, we have about 400,000 Naira in our account. Then, um, the, the problem I have is that I'm partnering with someone, I'm using somebody's workshop, who is also into furniture making. And we, we were doing well at the time, and when he noticed that I was doing better, because I did woodwork, first degree, masters, and I'm doing it in my PhD, and I was trained by one of the best woodworkers in Nigeria. So he was uncomfortable about that and has started showing attitude. I said, okay, it's time for me to man up and do my thing myself. So right now I've acquired some machines. Even some of them I, I asked for, I've gotten them. So I need bigger space because I have to have a semi-formal classroom for teaching of theory. Then we'll go to the workshop for practicals. And I was contacted by um, a school in Mina, Niger State. I, my loft bed was used for exhibition at the university convocation. So one of the women that run the school saw it and she told me to make 12 of those beds, which each is 120,000 naira. I am seeking that I in with, um, see the vision, see the kind of income I make and see that I want to empower youth too graduates who are roaming around the street without jobs, um, coppers that are on training, some of them go to the place of primary assignment and do nothing. So that time they waste their should be. They use it to learn um, furniture making. And in the universities too, they teach woodwork, but the practical is just 30%, which normally the curriculum says is 70, 30, 70% practical and 30% theory. But what I do is I go to the universities and tell them, students, this is what I have. Pay a token and come and get this practical knowledge. And they are doing well. With rapt attention, the judges seem pleased with the business reports presented. Yeah, the first thing I want to say is you're a great example to young African entrepreneurs. So I'd like to know exactly what you want since some of the things on your list you say you don't even need anymore. Okay, now I need six million naira to acquire space, I've seen a space that has been lying there for a long time, but to rent the space is 500,000 per year. And my projection in my business plan is five years projection. So if I can get that space, I'm paying 2.5 million for five years, then I'll buy a pickup van, that's Diana, um, Toyota Diana for 2.5. That is um, a fairly used one. Then I need a wood combination machine that's for planing and sawing of solid timber. And I wouldn't mind if the machine is gotten for me, so I don't need to buy them. I know I didn't get the best. What are you carrying in your hand? My tape, carpenter's pencil and a piece of paper in case you want a furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Franca came prepared and also with the hope of a possible contract from the organization. So just so that I understand correctly, you need to pay the rental for the property for all five years now? Yes, sir. Why is that? Okay, like I, I studied the, um, the area. One thing in Mina is that once they see you're doing business and you're doing well, the person that owns the property will tell you I need to use this property. They will even speak it now, don't unlock Kipita. They will tell you to go, that I don't mind giving you your balance of your payment, that I need to use the property. And there's nothing you can do. But when it is written as a contract, I will sue you. There's nothing you can do about it. So if I take five years, that five years should prepare me to get my own permanent space. So in a space of 12, 10 months, you've collected four million Naira, yes, have you spent all that? No, I have not. And I'm doing a research on wood waste management. Now, Tell so us more about it. Oh, yes. I'm interested in that. Okay, my PhD work is on wood waste management. So I'm developing a framework for waste management for small and medium entrepreneurs in Nigeria. Now, if entrepreneurs, um, small and medium scale entrepreneurs are the people that they are the highest um, employer of labor in Nigeria, they are the bedrock of entrepreneurship in Nigeria and in Africa. So most um, small and medium scale enterprise, wood enterprises in Nigeria 
are the ones that produce the highest amount of waste in Nigeria. Like the sawmills, the furniture company, and the um, forest. So there I am producing the, the framework for them to know how to manage their waste, to know who to sell the waste to. Now in Nigeria, there is no company in Nigeria now that produces fiberboard or MDF, what is used to produce that table, the top. That's medium density fiber board or particle board or high density fiber board. The only company that was function functioning at the time is APMP in Lagos and uh, um, Sapele, but they are folded up now. Okay, can you just give us a minute? Thank you. With the technical know how, Franca seems to have made a long term estimation as she hopes to increase her labor and workforce. What's going through my mind is if she's got such a viable business, why isn't she taking, asking for a loan from a business, uh, from, a, from a bank, and paying off this debt as she, make, as she grows the business? She doesn't need a grant from AY. She's, her business is profitable. Should you find out how much she's saved so far? Because Suna did ask if she had consumed I said in saved. 10 months she saved 4 million, yes. assuming it's 10 months. And she said she didn't spend all. I think she's great. Um, with the equipment, there's that one piece of equipment that she's, she's missing. That's the, the big deal for her, is that piece of equipment. The wood thickness And, and obviously the space. Mm. Yeah, I think she's, she's great and I think she's going to do well. Uh, the other concern I have, or just a question, the land, the space she's identified, is it the warehouse or is it just a piece of land? Because oh, then, there, then there's a structure to put up if it's just a piece of land. Because in her opening statement, she also asked for a space to teach and a space to do work. Because that's where she's going to manufacture as well. But she didn't talk about building anything. I'd say it's a building. I think, yeah, yeah I think okay. I'm sure it's a building. So let's find out what kind of phones she's requesting for. I personally think that you're moving. You, you're not stuck. So you're moving, and you're moving steadily. You want to move fast, that's why you're here, or why don't you want to just keep moving? So you get to the top by yourself. Right now, I, I have people that really want to learn from me. I need space to accommodate them. But the correct space is not like they say you should move out, right? It's not even enough for a classroom space. Yeah, they didn't say you should move out from where you are. And the current space where you are is where you are making 400,000. Yes, I used to, sometimes I go to another person's workshop. It depends on the location where the business is coming from. But the main place I'm known for is that. And once you have, you keep your materials and they are stolen sometimes. It's a problem. You keep a gallon of gum and you come, you see half and you keep your boards and you come, you see the half of the half board, you don't see them. It's a sign to tell you that it's time to leave. So you're saying your primary need is to get out of where you are. Yes. And, and not yes. necessarily all about setting up for training interns. Get out and get space for training too. And my machines and the finished products. It's bad when you finish a product and you come mm. tomorrow and see a scratch on it. It's not good. To be honest, she needs the space. She needs you know? a space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. She needs the space. Are you getting it now? If AYE says yes, I will say yes. Yes, sir. I'm getting it. We are not saying yes. Okay, sir. I said if you say yes, then yes, I will get it, sir. So what makes you think you will say yes? The atmosphere. The atmosphere. I don't know. I just feel optimistic. That's a good way to feel. Yes. But I must tell you that if everybody that comes in here gets a yes, then AYU would not exist because we cannot even afford that. But I feel AYE, if I get it as a loan or partnership, AYE will benefit from it because I know from with time I'm going to train some people that AYE wants to be trained in furniture production. I think, I think your primary need now is to move out and to get your own space. But I also don't agree with, I, I'm not from here, so I wouldn't agree to pay five years rental. I would take a one year 
lease yes. with the view of buying my own place instead of making somebody else wealthy with my rental. We actually, I was of the opinion that one year monitor our progress before we commit to even five years. Because if we put that in for five years and everything is not what it seems to become, then we just have five years and follow please staying like that. So within one year, we can e easily predict what our business is like and then say, okay, yeah, she deserves an elongated lease that can be paid for. Yeah, and you can have a clause in your contract with them that you have you know, first option of renewing, you know, so that he cannot rent it to somebody else. You can always put that there. I think that's a brilliant suggestion because five years to tie yourself in there is, for me, a challenge. Yeah, what if the sales is not good in that particular location and you need to move, you know, there's just so many risks. And then you want to move and anyway, this money is gone to somebody else. Do you understand the angle where we look at things? Yes, sir. You get the business is not moving. You don't mind moving because it's not your money. You didn't pay for it. We paid for it. And that five years is gone like that. So Naid, are you happy to give her one year? I think one year would be a wonderful start. Go we'll start with one year. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you much. With Judge Steve and the AYE president trusting her ability, the judges decide to support her with a space for one year while monitoring her growth. They said they are going to pay for one year for my space to start my, to continue my business and move out from where I am. But it wasn't what I really expected, but I understand from their own angle too. As an entrepreneur, you need to relax, you need to take care of yourself, and you need to look good. You need to explore, you need to network, and you need to continue acquiring new knowledge. And there is only one place where this is happening in December 2019. It is the largest gathering of entrepreneurs in Africa. It is the AYE Convention 2019. I will be there, and I will see you there. My expectation of meeting the international judges is first to uh, give me the opportunity to see the other side of my business and also, more importantly, to receive funding up to 5,000 US dollars, which is about 1.5 million, to build a plant in Nevada. Olufemi Adesokwe plans to go into the business of waste management to process waste into cooking gas. This sounds like a good plan. Olinx Multiventures is a bioenergy and waste management enterprise that produces eco-friendly and affordable cooking gas from the processing of organic waste in a digester. This helps us to produce affordable cooking gas and electricity and organic fertilizer for people with the challenge of energy and fertilizer poverty. The IWWA project has contributed to improving solid waste management systems in West Africa by fostering policies at both the national as well as a regional level and involving authorities in the design of waste management policies under the guidance of African and European experts. The poor state of waste management in the region is primarily due to the lack of operational waste management system, which results in the region's countries suffering from persistent waste problems. Our target markets basically are those people living in rural areas 
that cannot access non-hazardous cooking fuel as well as chemical fertilizer. Is this a startup or is it an existing business? It's a startup. So we currently, the milestones we have achieved so far is that one, we have been able to register the business with the Corporate Affairs Commission and as well registered with the Federal Inland Revenue Service for the payment of our tax. We have also currently at the 50% completion of the Ventures website as well as um, we have been able to design the architectural and structural design for our digester. The total cost for the startup is about 2 million naira. However, on the part of the venture, we have been able to raise about 500,000 naira, which will be channeled into the operating costs the, for the very few months of the production. However, we are looking at the 75% from funding like African Young Entrepreneurs to help us to be able to construct the digester. Adesope, what is your background, expertise, you and your team? Okay, thank you. Um, I am the CEO and founder of Olinx Mental Ventures. I have a first degree in civil and environmental engineering with options in environmental engineering. Also, I'm a certified project manager as well as a strategic manager. I am a serial entrepreneur, having managed a couple of other ventures in conjunction with some of my colleagues. My CEO holds an uh, ordinary national diploma in animal science and currently is a final year student of the University of Ghana studying agricultural science. Okay, thank you for that. I understand. I understand. You say you're a serial entrepreneur? Yes. You run businesses that are profitable? Yes. Which businesses are this? A printing business. I see. So myself and my elder brother, we run a printing business. Okay, so uh, it looks like a, an honorable project. And uh, I, I see you want to build at an abattoir. Is that because you're going to use like animal parts for the biogas? It says some, about building something at an abattoir. I, no? Have I got the wrong information? I, okay. I, I, Abattoir, a place where you kill animals. Is that related to your project? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, now, the, the project idea helps us to reduce the environmental pollution caused by... Abattoirs. By, by yes, right. by abattoirs. So what we do basically is that, for example, in Ibadan, where we, we are looking at starting, the Ibadan Central Abatio, located in Akinyele, on a daily basis, they kill up to 700 animals, yes. consisting of cows, dogs, pigs, and other sort of animals. Now, the minimum number of kilograms of waste gotten from each of these animals is put to be 324 kilograms per animal, especially mm -hmm. the cow. Mm -hmm. Now, this multiplied by over 700 cows is mm -hmm. going to give us hundreds of kilograms. So what we are doing is that this waste, instead of constituting hazards to the environment, we convert it to cooking gas as well as organic fertilizer. Fantastic. So now we need to hear about the business side of it. How is it going to make money? What's your projection? Okay. Now our business model is the revenue we place, the, the money, the fee charge for the cooking gas. Now we charge 150 naira for per kilogram of the cooking fuel compared to the existing LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, that charge 250 to 270 naira per kilogram. So we are making a stream of revenue consist of sales of cooking fuel. And secondly, the organic fertilizer. So in our digester system, there is no waste. So the byproduct of the process is also an organic fertilizer. So we also said that to rural farmers that cannot afford chemical fertilizers. And as well, we also do training and consultancy for young people that are interested in this project. So we also do um, into construction of biogas systems for schools and institutions that want to use their waste to generate power. How much are you asking for? 1.5 million naira. 
These, so I just need to find out because some of these numbers don't make sense to me. You said when a cow is is uh, is, um, is slaughtered at the abattoir, there's 324 kilograms of waste of waste from one cow. Yes. Now, consisting of the waste is consisting of both the manure, the blood, the 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 hooves. So, what's the 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 overall estimation from research? Is that there where, are where, where did you get these estimates from? This doesn't sound accurate oh, oh, to me okay. at all. Okay. Not even close. All right, thank you. Um, Professor M.K. Shudra was my supervisor mm. when I did my final year project. So this is one of the projects he has worked on. And in fact, during President uh, Obasan job a regime as president, Professor M.K. Shudra constructed 36 of these biogas in the Texas states of the Federation. So I've, I've, I've been able to get that fact from, and in fact, it's a published work that can be seen online. How much does the cow weigh when it's alive? Well, I, I, it depends on the size of the cow, but I can. In business, accuracy and transparency are the deal breakers. Just so I understand, because I've actually been involved in a project that working at the abattoir with the waste and then that's why I'm just trying to understand the numbers. Okay. Is, is this a feed lot and an abattoir? Because you talk about all the, the feces and that. So how long does the cow stay there at, at the abattoir? Okay, now, the, oftentimes, the, the way the abattoir operates is that they bring cow mm. to be slaughtered. And that's it, and then they get slaughtered? Yes, and okay. that's all. So okay, it is great. the waste at the point of slaughtering. Got it. Got that it. We can okay. Collect. I think okay. it sounds fabulous. I still haven't really heard the right numbers. I want to hear like in month one, we anticipate we will generate this much. Month right. two, month three, or first six months, one year, whatever. Okay, our projection is that in year one, we'll get 12 million naira from the sales of cooking fuel alone, and as well as 8 million naira from the sales of organic fertilizer because per day, our estimation by the capacity of the plant we, we have designed, we'll be able to get 220 meter cube of cooking fuel per day. And one other very important thing about this digester plant is that the plant, because of its proximity to the abattoir, it doesn't run out of raw material. That's one. Number two is that every other day, the digester by itself, through anaerobic digestion, produces this gas. So even if in the next 30 days, it has the capacity of producing gas for 30 days. So even if in 30 days, we did not refill the biogas plant with, with uh, manure, we will still keep generating yeah. cooking gas. I don't understand how you can create what you've said you want to create with 1.5 million Naira. The beauty of the digester plant we are looking at is that all of the materials that will be used in the construction will be sourced locally. So which makes the cost of uh, construction very less. Again, because of my background of civil engineering, the bulk of money that will have gone into supervision into designs, into architectural work. I will, have, I will have taken care of that by myself. So basically, what we are looking at is that the 1.5 million is going to help us to get materials like cement, gravel, and the rings. Because instead of doing a whole lot of excavation, what we'll be doing is to get rings, concrete rings that will fix together, just like we have in a traditional um, well. And th that's the digester? Yes. Right? And then you still need to prepare the site. Do you have a site that you own? Yes. Um, we don't have a site currently. You know what? Um, in some cases we have entrepreneurs like this. Your project is laudable. The money you requested for is too small. On that note, say no. Have a nice day. Thank you.
Oh no, the judges consider Olufemi's business unrealistic, considering his budget. Their opinion was that it was a laudable project. However, the funding I have requested for is too small. It has helped me to see the other side of the business and to be able to go back to the drawing board and come up with something more concrete and fine. Next on Africa's Young Entrepreneurs. Really enjoyed having a, a, a local person go. There's Chinese machines. This is the challenge. I found it, I fixed it. We have a better, a better version. That was nice. 